Hello everybody, all thanks to LD Mobile. This is NBL Overtime as we head towards the playoffs. We're two weeks away. We can't wait and I'm assuming you're exactly the same. Hashtag NBL21 to get involved. Corey Homicide Williams, look good man, what's up? What's going on? How you doing? I'm good. I'm psyched. I'm pumped. I see your energy. Uh, it is. It's like a Cam Oliver dunk. It's through the roof. Studs and duds. Is that out today, Liam, or not? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Can't wait. You, you did get a little bit thrown, understandably so. Yeah. When there's games on every single night, it's hard to sit down and do it. Makes it tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Darren Barker. Yes. Our man sorts the backdrop. It's the Isaac White NBL overtime yep. episode. Bang. Today, big fella uh, up and about. I love his energy. We talk about instrumental players, and obviously from a point perspective, of course, it's probably Jessup and definitely Harvey, but his energy off the bench is something in a long season with what feels like a million games being played, and he bought it on Friday night when Brian Goyzian sat in a timeout and said, any chance of anyone doing anything? <laughs> and that's why he's front and centre. All right, let's start with some bad news, though, and some news that as a Perth Wildcat fan in the Red Army, you'd... Definitely pretty disappointed about it. But I think that everyone wants to see Bryce Cotton every single time. And we want to see him available. But the news yesterday that he had surgery. Hematona after a, a, a corky in the quad. Mm. It is... We don't know 100% certain when it did happen. Have a look at this because this is what we were able to have a look at last Thursday night's game when they take on the Bullets. Of course, over comes a screen from Big Hodgie. And he pulls up a little sore on the back of that. Fair enough, too. If Hodgie... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it makes contact with you. I'd be down for at least two and a half weeks. But in saying that, uh, on Saturday, the swelling, the inflammation, the pain got a little bit too, uh, or got a little bit more. So they checked him out and he's had the surgery. And this boy, it doesn't matter if you're a Red Army fan or just a fan of the NBL like we are, oh, it's painful just to watch, even if it's not the one that actually caused the injury we're talking about. The fact is that we need him back come the playoffs. He's ruled out for the rest of the regular season. They are going to finish at least second. So, of course, that minor premiership is huge when it comes to home court advantage in a grand final. That. But they're, they're probably not... Well, in fact, yeah, you're probably right. You're not going to now. But need to get him back. Liam, do you have anything to add here? Uh, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Like everybody, I think, here in the news. Um, I remember after that game, chatting with some people, saying, Bryce Cotton just never gets hurt. Things happen to him and he seems to just... Knock, he bounces back up mm. and he plays on and we saw him have the slip and then he got that knee and we think, what's going on? Bryce Cotton's like the plastic man. But then, of course, he sits out the game, he plays against Cairns, mm -hmm. which is all part of what I'm trying to wrap my head around. Then he sits out the game with the groin issue and then all of a sudden this comes about and he goes under the knife. So it, it really throws a lot of things into disarray. You know, the what Perth Wildcats were a big part of the run home for teams like Illawarra and Sydney, matchups against that team. And the huge question mark, will he indeed be right, ready to go for a semi-final series? So we are on cotton watch right now as we head towards the end of the season. Regardless of what it is, Homicide, before I let you loose, regardless of what it is, when you have surgery, Two weeks out before the end of the regular season, you are in a race against time. It doesn't, it, it, most of the time, it doesn't even matter what the surgery is. The fact that you had to be opened up and you've got to recover from that as well as the injury and all the rest of it does make it a huge race against time. And, and we know that once he's there, well, as you touch on, it wouldn't surprise us if he rolled up the game one of a semi-final series against Phoenix and dropped 10 threes. But it is interesting to see how it plays out. What are your thoughts? I don't know the severity of this situation because I've never seen anyone have this type of injury and surgery. So I don't know what the recovery time is. But I tell you this, if he come at, if he's coming back to play come finals, he'll be ready. He's he's either he's not coming back half ass. Agreed. He's going to come back all the way and I tell you this, a well-rested Bryce Cotton. We know what that we we know what that is. We know what it is. So I don't know what's going on, obviously, in that camp. They're so tight-lipped over there. Mm -hmm. We're just going to have to wait to see what happens in, at the end of the regular season. Yeah, th that's part of what, what I've been trying to work out as well, is the timing, right? We've all been sitting there. They, they rested Todd Blanchfield because he was a little sore. Then Jesse Wagstaff didn't play. And it's like, well, it's probably Bryce Cotton's turn, and then he doesn't go to Adelaide. We said, well, that makes sense, right? It's time to lighten his load. And then this. So we all start thinking, what's going on? What, what is indeed the severity of this injury? And then you talk about going under the knife or getting opened up. I mean, to what extent? I mean, is this just like a needle-type yeah. situation to drain the blood? I'm trying to find out a bit more about what has happened. Um, but 
you know, it's... And, 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 and what, just on this that, has happened in the it, AFL a little bit. It has, just, just talk just, us through. Just first, just first. Now, was the word surgery used officially or we Procedure. Just, procedure was used. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's, that is... There's the difference between possibly mm. it being a huge needle, which is not pleasant, as well as going under the knife. It has happened a little bit. Jaron Geary, uh, a couple of years ago, in fact, got an injury. But he got compartment syndrome, and hence, when he opened up the league, there would be people right now who might have seen the, the gruesome photo that did the rounds a couple of years ago, and he had to have the leg actually opened for a couple of days to allow the blood. And, and yet again, I know it's hard to believe, but I'm not a doctor, um, so I am paraphrasing here. But that, that was a lot more severe. Mm. Uh, Michael Walker, a jockey, actually had it a couple of weeks ago. He actually broke his leg, did his ACL, and had compartment syndrome as well. So they opened it up and let it flow. I, I, I have absolutely no doubt that Bryce Cotton is nowhere near this. Mm. So it seems like a situation where he's copped the corky. For whatever reason, it's, it's swelled. It's been, obviously, a fair bit of discomfort there and have been able to put him in. And we have got two weeks of the regular season left. Mm. As well. So he's got plenty of time. And with that groin, of which he was probably going to be rested anyway, you mention it. Sometimes there's a silver lining to injuries. Mm. And right now the Red Army and probably Bryce Cotton and probably the whole Wildcats fans are, or the players and the staff are not seeing that. But in two weeks' time, if he's right to go, he's groined his body. At times he looked a little tired, although that hasn't been the case the last couple of weeks. This is going to work, could work, and hopefully... Works nicely for the Perth Wildcats and Bryce Cotton because well, the NBL goes to a whole new level when Bryce Cotton's on the court. Well, the second half of this season, from my eyes, he looked worn down. So this is a silver lining. Mm. And remember, we're speculating what this procedure mm. was. Mm. It never said they opened him up. Mm. They just That's said true. they drained the blood. Yep. Right? I think he'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be fine. And I tell you, as you know it, to have the best player in the competition well rested in two weeks, I wouldn't want to see that. Can you can you touch base with that guy who DM'd you telling you that that's on Sean Long and just see what he's got to say about it? <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I don't talk I don't talk to guys like that anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't talk about that anymore. All right, well the race for Bryce Cotton to be fit. That guy definitely... told me, man. That's why you can't listen to people who you don't know. I agree. I, He's I, in the room next door. He's in the, in the room next door. Next... His friend is in the room next door. <laughs> Yo, you cannot listen. If I don't know you, don't DM me nothing, man. Good. I agree. Now, let's get to... Uh, while <laughs> oh, Bryce Cotton is a race against fitness, the Sydney Kings and the Illawarra Hawks are in a race for the fourth playoff spot. South East Melbourne Phoenix, you'll agree, are going to be there and make their first ever appearance as a franchise in the postseason. Well, let's have a little look. Illawarra's got at New Zealand, Adelaide, Perth and Sydney. Now, of course, without Bryce Cotton, that changes just a little bit. But Sydney is similar. We've got at Perth, Melbourne, at Illawarra. That game could decide the playoffs. So, essentially, it's a wild card game brought forward a little bit. And then Brisbane at home to finish it. Uh, 17 and 15, Illawarra currently in fourth. 500 for the Kings. What are you thinking? You had about? Brisbane a few weeks ago, right? I had Brisbane a few weeks ago. I did... You jumped off the Sydney track for some reason. Well, I just thought the injuries would get them. I've been on Sydney in the pre-season, middle of the season. I thought injuries would slow them down. Yeah. I honestly did not expect Brisbane to be this bad in the last two weeks. They, they have been really disappointed. Well, that, what a cliff fall. Yeah. They beat the Wildcats and we think, hold on, here we go. Yeah. They're going to make some noise. And then they um, really lay a couple of eggs against South East Melbourne and Melbourne. So we're, we're essentially down to Sydney and Illawarra now. Now, you still feel like Illawarra are going to get through? I don't feel like it. I know they Come will on, get man. through. I know. I've said <laughs> this it. from the beginning. Yeah, Did I, I not say they was going to be in the finals from yeah, the beginning? No, you, you, you have said it all year. They have... It's all in their hands. They have three out of these four games at home. It's all in your hands. You go 500, you should be in. Sydney literally would have to go three and one. That's That's... Three and one. They're going three and one. They're not going three and one. They're beating on, Perth man. in Perth. No Bryce Cotton. <sighs> They're beating Illawarra in the, and Brisbane in the last round. <laughs> the Kings are going through. All right. I got Illawarra. I got Illawarra. I got Illawarra. Do you Illawarra that... literally could win out. They've beaten New Zealand on the road before. Not right? They're not... What? They haven't beaten New Zealand on the road? In New Zealand? They beat New Zealand on, in don't... Tasmania. Come on, man. Come on, man. Nothing. It's time to win. That's different in New Zealand. That's... No, it's not. It's they were rolling in New Zealand. <laughs> they were rolling. It's different. And I agree. New Zealand were probably playing better there. But it's a little different now. They're back in their home country, their home beds. 
back with their family and friends after being on the road for seven months. It is time for finals. Mm -hmm. I'm not. If you're a finals team, mm -hmm. you cannot allow a team who's done to spoil that. Yeah. You have to win that game. It's going to be interesting. It definitely is going to be interesting, but I, Adelaide, we know they're going to beat Adelaide, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perth, that'll be tough. Let's say they lose that game. They're, not, they're going three and one. I'll I think like that. I, I, I'm going to give them the win against Perth, but they're going to lose to Sydney in the final round. I'll take the three and one then. That'll still give two and two. Illa, Illawarra that. They're advantage. losing to New Zealand. Okay. And, and, and Sydney's going to win out? No, they're going to lose to They'll Melbourne. They'll be three and one. Yeah. Okay. And now get through on percentage. And of okay. course, that that, <laughs> that was a huge win. That win by Sydney on Saturday was huge. Of course, going over and it, it is tough. Huge. They're to tough go over to New there. Zealand and play. They yeah. are incredibly tough. And playing back home, they've got the adrenaline, they've got the emotion, they've got the passion all intertwined into it as well. And New Zealand were really good in that first game. Like Finn Delaney was remarkable. He was huge. We'll get to him a little bit later on in the show. But the way that they just gutted it out in the second half, Sydney was. Brilliant. And I think if they do, in fact, make it, if they finish fourth, we'll look back on that win and go, that is where they I honestly gave themselves the belief that they can be their yeah. semi final. It's an interesting kind of um, time right now because if, if so, whichever ones of these, whichever of these teams start losing or miss out, they're going to start to look back at some of those bad beats yeah. where they let themselves down, like the Kings losing to Adelaide in overtime at home. A few weeks ago. Up 16. They, up, they're going to look back at a game like that. So it's a fascinating run home. Every, you talk about the Kamloops wildcard game. I mean, yeah. almost every one of these games yeah. right now has the excitement and the energy of those wildcard type of games. Now, while we talk about the teams that are going to fight it for fourth, South East Melbourne Phoenix have really turned it around. Their last Man! Season, Kiefer Sykes, Mitch Creek back to Mitch Creek. Of course, Kiefer Sykes back from injury. Ooh. Brockhoff starting to feel a lot more comfortable. They're playing good basketball. Mitch Creek was brilliant in the first quarter in this game. And in the third quarter, which was the most important Brisbane quarter of the season, South East Melbourne just choked them up. And I've said this before, boys. In a situation such as this, this is why finishing on top, you'd rather play a Sydney or an Illawarra, if you're Melbourne or Perth, than a South East Melbourne Phoenix team who are by far playing their best basketball. Well, that's how the ladder works. You try. That's, that's why you get the advantage. But... but I, I, think it's even, I think it's even more noticeable. Yeah, no, they're, on, they're in a I tier of their own right now. The top now. three teams are miles There is no doubt else. about that. They, they absolutely demolished the bullets, made them look second rate. And um, it, was a, it was another statement win. After on the back of uh, winning a throwdown, they've won four in a row now, South East Melbourne. And those issues we were talking about a couple of weeks ago are in the rearview mirror. This team is flowing with confidence playing at a high level, have all their key pieces uh, in a great space right now when you talk about Kiefer Sykes and Mitch Creek. And they have they've turned the, the issues of their depth into a massive strength. So um, that is not a team you want to be playing right now in any way, shape or form. And they've got the advantage right in this little bit of having um, plenty of time on the practice court, which is helping a, in a big way to get guys like Ryan Brokoff and the like up and about. They have a hectic schedule to finish the year. Really hectic. They're going to play in New Zealand and then they've got to play in Brisbane to finish off the year. There's a chance they might have to fly from there directly to Perth to play a game one of the semi-final series, which will be really, really difficult for them. But in the meantime, they're up and about. Let me tell you about this team, what I love. Please. Right? When they were in that funk, Sykes were injured. He was injured, he was playing injured, he sat out a couple of games. They struggled. We know this, right? Mitch Creek, I talk, I yelled, I complained about his field goal attempts. Give him the ball. Look at the numbers over their four game win streak. I'm going to start with Yanni Wetzel first. He's averaging 14 and 7. In those four games, he had 54 mm. points, 28 rebounds, right? Getting easy touches, mm. dunks, making plays. Uh, around the basket and getting easy layups. Mitch Creek, last game he had 13 field goal attempts. The game before that when they beat Melbourne United, 17 field goal attempts. The game before that against Cairns, 15. And the game before that was an easier win against New Zealand, 8. He's averaging 14 field goal attempts per game. Give the man the ball, he's going to deliver. And it's not even about points all the time with him. 
He's creating easily easy assists mm. and plays for his bigs. That's why Yanni Wetzel was getting easy buckets because Mitch Creek is putting pressure on the rim. He's beating his guy off the dribble. The help has to rotate. Yanni getting easy layups and dunks in that dunker spot. Mitch Creek averaging 14, 5, and 5. Kiefer Sykes. He's averaging 16 and 5. The way he's, he goes about his business, I love. Mm. He doesn't go in and just look for his own. He goes in and looks for others. He sets the tone, and in the, the, third, the second quarter and the fourth quarter is when he really decides to assert himself and get busy for himself. But I love how he sets the table and he's leading his team. And he is playing like, look, I was letting you guys down when I was injured, right? And we were losing. I was playing half-assed because I was playing injured. I wasn't my normal self, but I'm my normal self now. I'm going to play for y'all, and I got y'all, and he's leading this team. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why they're looking. There's other parts that, you know, play their part, right? Cam Glidden, Ruben Tarangi, broke off coming back little by little, making real good plays like the last game he played off the dribble, creating off the dribble. And while they're running him off the, the three-point line, he's creating off the dribble, right? That's all necessary. Uh, Adnam coming off the bench, doing what he does, right? Ben Moore doing – everybody's playing their part. But it starts with those three guys. Yeah. And with Keeper Sykes, and he locks up on D. Mm. We, he locked you – know, if there was a first-team on defense, he'd whoa, make whoa, it. Whoa, 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 whoa. If there was a first-team on defense, nah, nah, nah. he'd make it. Can you hold that? Can you hold that? It nah. might pop up a little bit later and, in the show. And, and this is what I was talking <laughs> I about agree. in the offseason before they signed Keeper Sykes, when we were talking, should they try to re-sign John Robertson? No. This is the perfect guy perfect. for this team. Because the Mitch Creek, Kiefer Sykes pick and roll. With oh, my Young goodness. Young Wetzel Roman on the, the baseline. And Cam on, on the, the left wing. side and Ryan Brock off over there. Good oh, luck. my good, good luck with that. But then you combine that. Like you say, you spat a whole bunch of facts. What he does at the defensive end as the head of their snake up. Man. So they're in a tremendous spot right now with all the right pieces. You, you don't want right to see pieces. them. No way. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see them. Kiefer. And, and, sorry. Go on. If Bryce Cotton is not healthy, second play third, it's going to be Southeast Melbourne Phoenix versus the Perth Wildcats. And with Bryce Cotton healthy, what's their record this season? 500. Don't forget what happened early in the season against the Phoenix with Perth. They got their ass. They both beat each other's asses, basically. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, that's even, and it would be advantage Southeast Melbourne Phoenix if Bryce Cotton ain't 100%. Now, Kiefer yeah, Sykes. Schedule, that right there. The schedule might, might ruin him. Oh, no, no, no. Kiefer Cans, S Southeast Melbourne Phoenix. This is their run. Cans at home. W. Brisbane. It's over for them. New Zealand, they going to beat them because they're on a six-game streak. Um, they're going to walk into New I'm Zealand. Not, he means the, he not, means the travel. He I'm means not travel. About that, that game against New Zealand on the 5th. That game in Adelaide, in Brisbane on the 8th then they might have a travel day and play game one mm. in Perth. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's all good. But I'm just saying, Brisbane, I mean, South East Melbourne Phoenix could literally nah, finish out on a seven, on an eight-game win streak. They'll no beat doubt. those teams. No no they could finish out. The way they rolling? Welcome, boys. It's so nice to have you on the show. <laughs> Kiefer Sykes. <laughs> it's so nice to have some company. <laughs> Keep, Kiefer Sykes. I'm here with you now, Liam. Much better with friends. <laughs> I'm going to get this out. Kiefer Sykes, I wasn't saying you wouldn't be at first... Team all defensive. Simply got that later in the show. I didn't want homicide to ruin it for me. All right, let's go about this. Uh, last time I said that the pass from Cam Glidden to Sykes on that alley oop was was the main part. Kiefer hit me up on Instagram. Um, let's go to Cairns. <laughs> happy for you, Cam. Happy for you. No, what are you? Oh, you're happy for me. People abusing me. <laughs> you're used to it. No wonder you're always happy. Uh, let's talk about now teams we know aren't going to be there. Cairns, New Zealand, Adelaide and Brisbane are not going to be there. Although for this particular week, because Brisbane can still mathematically make it. Come on, man. We'll do it next week. Hey, I'm just saying they can still mathematically, ma mathematically make it, even though they won't. Who should they re-sign right now? I'm going to start with you. Cairns. Corey Homicide Williams, who is the signature they need first? They need to go get DJ Newbill, a defensive player of the year last season, because that's exactly what they lacked all season consistently. And he was their leading scorer as well. Um, that team, we all had high hopes for them. They overachieved last year. They were legit, and it all fell apart. And it was difficult for them because you could only have two imports. Losing one of the three, it still would have been tough for them, but... Looking at how they suffered and bled points, 
they need to get this man back. <laughs> it's a great point. I'm just picturing DJ Newbel walking back into Kev's <laughs> headquarters. <laughs> like, like the, what's that guy from WWE who walks in like, he'll be like, you guys miss me? Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, hey, his price has gone up. The price oh, is definitely the price gone, up. gone up. Oh, my goodness. Um, so that, that's a great point. Who you got? You, we gotta, gotta bring him back. They gotta, re they gotta resign Majuk Deng. Yep. You know, you've got to make sure that you've got to get those imports right. But Majuk Deng and Kwat Noi were two starters on a team that was one game away from a grand final appearance last season. So they're key local pieces, those two guys on the wing. And I'm prioritizing Majuk Deng at this stage. His injury at the start of the NBL Cup was the beginning of the absolute end. True. For the Taipans this year. Really important piece. And I, I've I've enjoyed his energy upon his return. Yep. He's been really good for them in the last few weeks, trying to finish the season strongly. So get that deal done. Make sure he's locked away and uh, he's going to continue to improve let's get, next year. Let's get to Adelaide. Who are you re-signing if you're Jeff Van Groningen? Homicide? Brandon Paul. I think he's a stud. I think that um, with him, with a full season under his belt, coming back, we know what to expect when he gets the ball, if he's a focal point. So I believe that you got to bring him back. And I don't think he'll cost as much. Now, if he finished out the season on a high, like how he came into the season, then it, it would be difficult. His price would be a bit higher. But I think that the way the season is, is going to finish out, they're going to lose out. That's just the reality of it. And your price goes up with your performance and the wins. I think you can get him for cheaper than you possibly could have had the case been different. So I think you need to get him back. My, my guy for the 36 is Isaac Humphreys. It's a two-year deal, but it was the uh, mutual option no, I did that. <laughs> for the second year. Come so. on. Mm. So it was There's a no one such thing as mutual <laughs> options in contracts. Yeah, so, so he's coming out of contract, essentially. And um, that's the guy that they need to bring back. Was an MVP candidate at the start of the year. Would have been Defensive Player of the Year. Mm. Yep. Had he played the whole season, leading the league in blocks, averaging three a game, sending it away from around the rim and um, that's you got to you try, got to try and get him back because I, I was skeptical I'll put my hand up and so I was skeptical about Humphreys alongside DJ um, but we saw earlier in the year that they were actually Connor Henry was putting them in positions to make that work pretty well so bring that back continue to grow that chemistry they're going to need to get that point guard spot get sorted right. Got Sunday Detch on the extended contract. You put a keep a guy like Brandon Paul as well. Isaac Humphries is the key in the middle. I agree, and I think that because he was injured, majority half the year we can say I think he would want to come back, get a full season under his belt, and prove what he was showing us in the beginning of the year before injury. All right, New Zealand. Uh, obviously, last week, last year we we raved about their signings, and now. Not necessarily their fault after what they've had to go through in, in NBL 21. So who's the first person they re-sign? You bring back Ty Webster you bring back Levi Randolph. they got to bring both of those guys back. If they have an opportunity to, they need to. Ty Webster, um, in the beginning, you know, he was getting those field goal attempts up. But once he found the balance and understood, you know, give and you receive as well, once he started doing that at a, at a consistent basis, um, the team looked better, and he looked better as well. Mm -hmm. Levi Randolph, you bring him in from the beginning, it's a whole different dynamic. He adds a different dynamic. He could shoot the three and hit the mid-range, can put the ball on the deck as well, and finish. So I think you bring those two back, that would be a great look for your team. Yeah, I agree with you, especially there about Levi Randolph. That's, you know, and that was a great deal. I flagged it a couple of times because they signed him to uh, a two-year deal, essentially, finish off this season, but we're going to have a club option for next year, very nicely done by Matt Walsh and that organisation because now they have the opportunity to bring him back. And his clutch, he came up big in the jungle. They, they nearly got... Uh, actually, did they, they get over the No, they nearly got over the line. No, they beat him. They got over the line. Yeah. He was huge down the stretch. Yeah, he was big in that one as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, he's, you know, he's, a, he's a really good piece to build with. Uh, I, I'm interested, though. Where, where do you think Will McDowell-White fits... In amongst, so is it time to cut him loose? Yeah, I don't think he he'll fit. He only came in because Ty got injured. So if Ty's not injured, he's not even on the cards to come in. He, there's no signing them all. There's no signing Ty if Corey Webster, McDowell. There's no nice having all these guys who enjoy the ball in their hand at different stages. So you just stacked at too many positions and trying to keep people happy by playing moments. Although Will McDowell White 
has had a really good last couple of weeks once he started to feel a bit more comfortable about it as well. All right. Mm. Santa's <laughs> watching his back. Brisbane. Yes. No, no, no Brisbane he mathematically wants, can still make the play. Oh, okay. Okay. The sleeve, okay. He still believes in them. <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> believe in them. They cannot make it. But mathematically... Mind you, no team that is mathematically still <laughs> eligible to make the playoffs or finals in world sport have ever made it. But Brisbane, I'm giving you one last chance to prove uh, the uh, stats okay, right. Okay, Mark okay. Slocum, we'll keep, we'll keep <laughs> you in there for the time being. But Santa has been watching. Let's, Good. Uh, let's oh, roll. Man. We start in Adelaide. A couple of weeks to catch up on here. Tony Crocker, he's got the chain on still. Look thought at the it was time. the 80s. It's, it's, yeah. early in the, it's in the second quarter. <laughs> slip it on, Connor, slip it on. Slip it on, Connor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he nearly <laughs> put it in there. And now we go into Brisbane. LP, oh, here's the moment he's been waiting for to sit. Oh. Couldn't quite get that done. LP in transition is Ty, Ty Webster into the back. And Corey's like, come on, bro. <laughs> what were you thinking? So it kind of helps if I'm looking. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, Ty, look at the foot skills. Here, just in the background, a little steep Nash style. <laughs> yeah. just, getting, just getting that done. I was disappointed with this from Jordan Hunter. Come on, Come on, man. Jordan. Come on, Jordy. And uh, uh, what about the Hungry Jacks fan? Oh. Like, <laughs> oh. Hey, I, oh. I that was, that was Rex awesome. Chambers tweeting about Luke Chambers. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? That and is then... amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Santa's watching is back in a big way. All right. Good news, great news. An Indigenous round starts tomorrow night mm. and it is going to be an historic night. We've already seen a couple of Indigenous jerseys, of course, with uh, Brisbane and Adelaide playing home games and not playing them this weekend. So they've, they've rolled out the Indigenous jerseys and look outstanding. Actually, if you have a little look at here, I actually said the other day that I think that clubs with Indigenous jerseys and Heritage jerseys, they should be allowed to roll them out. Not, we still have the round. The round is great for what it does and, and everything to include every single person who should be allowed and, and wants to play basketball around the country, OK? Mm. They do a great job of inclusion. Mm. But I think if you're round three next year, if you want to roll out your Indigenous jersey, I think clubs should be allowed. They look brilliant. They look brilliant. And Indigenous round goes to a whole new level this year because we're having our first female Indigenous referee, Jackie Dover, who's been uh, refereeing the WNBL the last two seasons. Yep. Referees her first NBL game tomorrow night. And uh, she's an extremely talented referee. Mm -hmm. and cannot wait to see her out there on the big stage tomorrow night in such a wonderful round. Yeah, no, it's terrific. And it's going to kick off with a bang too. We've got a little head start with a couple of teams, Adelaide and Brisbane, showcasing their jerseys in front of their home fans. But uh, that... Cairns, Brisbane, Nate Jowai, Tamari Wigness, mm -hmm. Jackie Dover making her debut. What a great way to tip it off. And th these actually, I love the jerseys, but these Welcome to Country um, uh, celebrations or um, uh, moments yeah. before the games is my favourite part of the Indigenous round because um, the, the chance to uh, really pay homage to um, the traditional owners of the lands of the areas in which these games are played is really, really important. It means a lot to a guy like Keanu Pinder and it should mean a lot to all of us. So it's a terrific initiative. This is a great piece of artwork, just quietly, that the NBL Commission, outstanding work by the artist. I, want to, I actually want a print of that. It looks amazing. It, up. it looks really great to celebrating all the different elements of our league. And it's a terrific round and it's going from strength to strength. Very well said. We can't wait for it to kickstart officially tomorrow night. All right, JD Sports, they bring us a sneaker of the week. They are, of course, the undisputed king of trainers. Have a look at this. Talking about very flash shoes, Shane Cook, who designed the Indigenous jersey for Adelaide 36, has also designed these shoes for Brendan Tees. Mm -hmm. They were then raffled off in an auction for, uh, I think it was Sick Kids, but charity anyway, and that's an outstanding awesome. kick. Our JD Sports sneaker of the week is Brendan Tees, and of course, JD Sports is the undisputed king of trainers. Yes, Liam? It means a lot to Brendan Tees as yes. well. His partner is Indigenous. There you go. And now JD are keeping up the momentum with Reebok this week. The men's question low, the great toast. Have a look at that. Alan Iverson, classic. And it's, uh, you can wear them on the court, off the court. They look amazing. Available in men's sizes this Friday. Selected JD stores and online to cop your pair. And for all rele release information, jd-sports.com.au. All right, quickly, I want to just get a quick yes or no out because I've got something else quickly. Will Adelaide replace Giddy with an import point guard? Yes. Will Tyler Harvey oh, be in the NBA no. next year? No, I want him back here. Should we have an all-defensive team? Yes. Justin Simon, will be, he be the Defensive Player of the Year? Yes. Will Nick K be a jack jumper? Yes. Ty Webster, first or second team? 
Second. All right, quickly before we get out of here, this was missed from Santa's watching. Lukey, run it. Show us. Look oh. at this. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, that is what we need. Shout Love out to it. the big fella. Love it. There we go, man. Look at that volleyball. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs>